Patricia Cornell, and I am proud to have represented Ward 11 in the state legislature. I was born in Manchester and have lived and worked here my entire life. My husband and I have lived in our home on the west side for 40 years. Before I retired, I was a guidance counselor at the middle school at Parkside for 36 years. I am involved in the Manchester community, having previously served as a waterworks commissioner for six years, and I am presently a Manchester City Library trustee. I would like to return to Concord to continue working on issues that affect families in Manchester. Some of the issues that most concern me are affordable housing, the continuation of the Medicaid expansion program, affordable higher education and skills training, adequate funding of our public schools, and fair treatment and equal rights for all people. We need to provide funding for the resources for the prevention, treatment, and recovery for opioid drug addiction. Disabled people are on a wait list for services. We have to commit to strengthen our comprehensive mental health services. We must end the stigma associated with mental illness so those suffering will seek and receive help when needed. Underfunding of our mental health system has caused people with mental health issues to spend days in emergency rooms. I will vote against giving tax breaks when the result is an increase in property taxes for local communities. The estate tax and inheritance tax, inheritance tax were cut. The business profits tax was cut. The state is not living up to its funding responsibilities. The state stopped contributing to the cost of the retirement system for municipal and school employees. School building aid was eliminated and state aid to public schools has declined. As a result, local property taxes are increased or community services are cut. This has to stop. I am asking for your vote on November 6th so that I can continue to work for the people of Manchester. Remember, please vote for Patricia Cornell, State Representative, Ward 11. Thank you. Back Manchester, we just took a quick break and uh, let me just tell you quickly what we did during the break other than to make a quick uh, change of people on set. We actually did a quick cleaning of the set. If you'll notice, we're all masked. Uh, we are very much believers that we need to do our part in, in helping the COVID uh, epidemic, excuse me, pandemic um, to be harnessed. And so you will see that we also uh, will follow our own guidelines. So we did a quick cleaning of the set. I think a, you know, a white glove touch would probably pass for this. And I just want to give a shout out to Representative Heidi Hamer, who was uh, doing some of the cleaning. She's not actually on set, but she's our production assistant, shall yep. we call her? I think we'll give labels to everybody. Uh, at the beginning of the show, at the beginning of the hour, I kind of just dove right in without really introducing us. Um, we are occasional members of the, st of the uh, studio uh, production team here. John Hopwood, who's thanks, who, who deserves every bit of thanks for what he's done for us, uh, is typically the host. So you may not know who we are. I'll start briefly with a, a little brief overview of who I am, and then I will turn it over to my co-host. Uh, my name is Connie Van Houten. I am a lifelong New Hampshire resident, mostly a lifelong Manchester resident. I did go away to college and a few little forays here and there, but Manchester is my, is my city, it is my heart, and uh, I came back and have settled here. I live on the west side. I am currently a state rep. I, as I explained very poorly, I think, about the Floatario, I represent words 10, 11, and 12 with Jane, uh, Jane Bolio. I have served on the school board. I'm a longtime teacher. I'm, um, I've re retired from a variety of teaching venues, including mostly high school, but college, English as a second language, adult education, and so on. 
Um, I don't want to belabor who I am. I think that uh, I've met many of you through the screen and many of you on site as well. And so I'm going to throw it over and have my co-host give you a brief introduction to herself. And then we have a very special guest, somebody that you've not yet met on camera, and we think he's a welcome addition to the team that we present on camera to you as we go through these, these uh, Meet the Candidate uh, sessions. Patty, you're up. Hi. Hi, I'm Patty Cornell. I, too, am a lifelong resident of Manchester. Um, I've lived in my house in Ward 11 for 42 years now, um, and I was a guidance counselor at the middle school at Parkside for 36 years until I retired seven years ago and ran for the legislature. I'm running for my fourth term now in the legislature, um, and I serve on the Education Committee, which, you know, I was really happy to be put on the Education Committee after serving 36 years as a, as a guidance counselor, so that's the thing that's most near and dear to my heart. Um, but the people of Ward 11 are actually the, the my first thing that I think of um, when voting on bills in the legislature, um, is it going to be good for Manchester? Is it going to be good for Ward 11? Um, and that's the way I make my decisions and how to vote. Um, and that's probably just about it for me. So now I'll introduce the person who's running um, in Ward 12 for State Representative Bill Zakharoff. Bill? Oh, thank you. Thank you. My name is Bill Zakharoff. I grew up in Goffstown, New Hampshire, a little west of here. And uh, college brought me to Syracuse, New York. And my career took me to Pennsylvania, then Ohio. Then I came back here to uh, New Hampshire, where I served on the planning board in Goffstown. About three years ago, I moved to the west side of Manchester. I love it here. Um, I've always kept paid attention to what's going on in government and kept my name out there in case I was needed. And there was a need, so here I am, stepped up and looking forward to serve. Are, is there any special interest that you have um, in the legislature? Are there any committees you're hoping to get put on? And, you know, what are there any bills that you would like to co-sponsor or sponsor if elected? One of the things that's uh, kind of near to my heart is I spent a lot of my career managing condominium and apartment associations. Um, in Ward 12, which is up on the northwest side of Manchester, you go from, you know, the north part of the uh, uh, by Rock Rimmon. And go all the way north up to where the where hooks it is a lot of new stores there but it's a part of town that has a lot of uh, rentals and a lot of condos and um, one thing that's changed a lot even in the 20 years or so since i was renting um, is that rents go up and up incomes do not so people are getting closer and closer to that line of uh, just barely being able to get by month to month should something happen as we've seen here for the epidemic um, it won't take any longer than a week or two before people are underwater. And this is something that's of great concern to me and I'd like to see what I can do to help maybe spread that gap between what we need to pay and what we earn. And Bill, may I just interject? I spoke this morning at length, actually on a Zoom, uh, Zoom call with one of a, the constituents that because I, I'm in 10, 11, and 12, mm -hmm. that you may end up working with uh, with a major condomini condominium issue. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the Mammoth Condominium Act and, and some bylaws, so I would certainly hope that you will be elected <laughs> and be ready and willing to dig in with me. Uh, condo law does come under the, the Commerce Committee, which is where I work, so I, sure, sure. I would love to have you on the team and have the two of us attack some of those issues. It was a very enlightening call, and uh, I think our constituents deserve somebody like you. Oh, thank you. I, I look forward to it. I'm feeling some big shoes, as you guys know. Bob Backus has been representing that district for many years now, and he's done a terrific job. Everybody up there knows him. You all know him. Everybody loves working with him. So some big shoes to fill, but I'll do my best. And I think you'll find Bob is very willing to be a mentor. Um, he, his heart and soul will still be in Concord, regardless of where he may be vacationing, hopefully when COVID allows us to vacation. He is, definitely. He's uh, reached out several times to me to offer his help Excellent. and assistance, and I'm going to de definitely pick his brain. Good, and you'll also be work, um, running with Ken Snow, too, who yes. is a lifelong, man not lifelong Manchester resident, but for many, many years, and very active, too, in mental health and health and human services. So mm -hmm. good running partner for you there. He's definitely too. good, because another big part of uh, Ward 12 is there is, you know, nursing homes up in that way, and that's another community that in many ways, at least economically, is similar to younger people, in that at your end of your life, you have fixed income, and if expenses keep going up, your income isn't going to. Yep. Uh, so those people sometimes are, are left either undercared for 
or back in with their kids or grandkids or whatever. So there are a lot of similarities. Despite the difference in age, there's a lot of similarities economically between the two groups. And we have, I, I'm actually a resident of Ward 12, even though I represent oh, the whole West Side. Um, May I please have your vote? Um, <laughs> actually, and I'm going to talk about that in a, in a minute. My ballot showed up today. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, and, and we do have a, our fair, of a, fair share of a concentration of, of elderly people living mm -hmm. in uh, congregate housing, and so your your issues and your concerns are are definitely well stated. Yep, that's something that I've talked about with Ken a few times, and Ken has been very active in that community. He goes around and checks with the people there all the time, so he's right on top of their day to day concerns, probably more so than I. But he's willing to let me know what needs to be done and when. And you're kind of bringing up the whole element of constituent service, which um, as we speak here, I think sometimes we we kind of speak. Um, without clarifying some of the things, because a lot of people in, in their daily lives don't really interact with anything going on in Concord. Mm -hmm. But um, a, a real el important element is that constituent service. I mean, okay. if um, someone calls Patty and, and is concerned about something uh, on the playground and, and uh, Northwest Elementary, which is just down the street nope, from Northwest her. Northwest is not mine. It's but it's down the street from yes. you. Yeah, <laughs> and so you know, but and I know that you will you'll reach out and take care of it or call and yeah. say, hey, Glossel Connie, this my, one's yours. Glossel is my elementary. <laughs> and so, it's funny that you mentioned yeah. that though, because I do live a block and a half from Northwest Elementary. But when they redid the districting lines and went right down the middle of Mason Street, and I'm on the side of Mason Street that now is part of Ward 11 and votes at Gosler, although Northwest is on my doorstop. So. We vote there, Northwest. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and I think there was an effort to keep a school as much as possible in each, in each of the wards yeah. as, as best we could. And that wasn't always easy to do because our city was laid out mm -hmm. uh, not for 12 wards, it was laid out for the convenience of people as the city was growing. Mm -hmm. um, let me just ask you, do you have, I'm sorry, did I no, interrupt? No. Let me just ask you this, Bill. Um, when you come to Concord, mm -hmm. um, what do you anticipate? What, what do you want to bring to the table in Concord, what what are the skill sets that you're going to say? Hey, here I am. Hopefully, good years first and foremost. You know, there's a lot of people who've been there a lot longer than I have. I don't expect to show up and reinvent the wheel. People have been working a long time to get things together and working, and it is working. The last two years, especially, have been great in the legislature. Um, so big years, and hopefully, a rational mind. And you know that there are 400 of us, so if you're looking yeah. for <laughs> rational minds, you're likely to find many, 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 many rational minds. Yeah. Uh, you heard, I think you heard some of our interview with um, our senator, Senator Kavanaugh. Oh, yes. And many issues came up, many thoughts uh, were shared. Are any of those issues anything that you'd like to address, having heard us talk? Uh, not sure off the bat. I don't have any one particular issue that I want to go in and change. Um, I first want to get my feet wet and then decide where I can work best. I think it sounds terrific. I think it's yeah. a very smart way to work. Um, may I just ask, uh, without getting too personal here, sure. why are you bothering with politics? <laughs> Today, <laughs> a lot of people are saying, you know, ah. It's always been an interest of mine, strangely enough. Um, I think I was maybe the only person ever convinced that I was a Democrat by the oratory gifts of uh, Mike, uh, Mr. Dukakis back in 1988. That was the first time I watched the presidential election that year. And I thought, wait a minute, I agree with the little guy. Um, and since then, I've tried to stay at least in touch with the party and in touch with people in government um, and serve when I can. I did not expect to, to be asked to serve, but I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Well, we're grat grateful okay. to have you stepping up. We have a couple of other things in our next segment, but I'm just going to throw out one of the big questions that people are asking themselves mm -hmm. today, and mostly, I think, with pretty good um, response. Kamala? Oh, what are we thinking? I'm excited. Um, I'm very happy. You know, I'm, I think it's a ticket we can be proud of. Well, I have to say I'm very, very excited. And in fact, they did quote me today in the Union Leader and on um, Inklink because I was originally a Kamala supporter until she, unfortunately, her campaign didn't work out the way we hoped. And then I became a Biden supporter. So mm -hmm. I actually am just thrilled and I think it's the, the a great winning ticket. I think they balance each other. I think he's steady and methodical. I think she brings excitement and energy. They like each other. They'll work well together. I'm, ju I'm just thrilled. And I think something that you just said um, is where I'm coming from, the concept of balance. She can both be kind and gentle and contemplative and thoughtful and ferocious and fierce, as we've seen her in some of the debates. I look forward to the vice presidential debates. I typically... Mm -hmm. 
would have watched them almost in an obligatory fashion. Now I'm thinking, get that popcorn and pull yeah. up a seat up near the, the screen, at, well, assuming that there will be some debates. I don't know how things will work out. But uh, I think that um, her fire mm -hmm. and her compassion are an intriguing combination that are something that a vice presidential candidate will certainly, you know, bring something to bear to the table. So that's one of the questions this morning. I think a lot of us yeah. are thinking Kamala. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't see it coming necessarily, but I didn't really see anything coming. I, I, I the decision no took a long time, yeah. so I wasn't sure yeah. we were going to go with that. We are running out a little bit of time, and so I want to get to yeah. But one other thing Please. we should bring up with with Bill oh, yeah. because he, he this is his first time running, and I don't think people that are running for the legislature think of it that often. That not only are we legislate legislators that go up to Concord, but we're also Hillsborough County delegates, True. which means we. Ha I'm on the executive committee, so we de do meet monthly. But as a whole, all of us from Hillsborough County are Hillsborough County delegates who meet to vote on the budget for the county. So we vote on the, the budget for the nursing home, for the sheriff, for the corrections, for um, the 4-H. It's, it's huge. It's huge. And, it, and that is part of our responsibility to, to do, too, because the county is, depends on what we do as legislators to, to fund them and to help them run. And it impacts the tax rate. What we do for it a does. budget at the county level uh, directly shows up in, in what you're paying for your tax rate. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Patty, because there are so many facets to being a state rep that until you actually get there and you think, really, I need to do that, I really need <laughs> yeah. to be there. Yeah. Uh, and then you find all the things that you don't really need to do, but you want to do mm -hmm. because they will broaden you as a person, as a legislator, as a committee member. A lot of our work is done in committee. Uh, we end up very much like brothers and sisters. Um, there are days when we are happy to sit and have lunch with each other and days when we think, really? Mm -hmm. My peanut butter said, which is mine, <laughs> don't touch it. So it, uh, it, it's just an intriguing, incredible type of, of, uh, of world that you'll be entering, and I, I certainly hope that you will be entering it. Have I missed anything, Patty? You know, we have a ton of papers here and a ton yeah. of topics, but uh, time is just spinning on us. <laughs> but there are two essential topics that we thought we would um, take up at this point. Do you want to talk about the census? And I'll talk about... Okay. Um, we just wanted to emphasize that it's really, really important that everybody fill out the census. Um, I believe they're shortening the amount of time that we have to take the census. And, and funding our representation in Washington, a lot of things are dependent on that. So if you haven't done the sentence, census and don't want to wait for somebody to come to your door, you can just Google it, Census 2020, and fill it out right online. And, be over and done with but everybody needs to do that thank you for mentioning that because it is such an important element um, something else that's very important and I will briefly address it and please fill in if I miss things because it's a little bit uh, more complex than I sometimes make things sound um, that of course is voting absentee uh, without any real understanding of what things will be like on September 8th when the primary polls open or on November 3rd when the general election is held uh, I personally, and I, I, I don't know how others are doing it, but I am encouraging everyone to vote absentee. Um, I mean, it, it could be a snowstorm. It could be a, a pandemic issue. There could be some reason to keep you away from the polls. And, and as an American citizen, I believe my vote is important. It is my one voice. It is my one chance to step up. Um, my mother was an immigrant who was desperate to vote, and we had trouble proving her citizenship. But once she finally got her citizenship, that was the thing she wanted to do. Even when I knew, when I drove her to the polls, that she would go into the booth next to me and vote opposite to me, and we would cancel <laughs> each other's votes, it was critically important to her, and, and I did do that. And so for absentee voting, it's really very simple. Uh, there is a change to the form. The original forms did not have a checkbox for COVID-19 as an excuse for, for not voting. That was uncomfortable for people, I understand that. They felt that they would be lying to check off disability or something of that sort. So the current forms do have that. You can download the, the current forms. You can. There are several ways to do this. You can walk into City Hall. Uh, at City Hall, you can fill out an application for the ballot. You have to fill out an application first. Uh, you can turn the application in right there, and because the ballots are now printed, you can get the ballot and vote right there. You're done, and you can walk away. Uh, the other possibility is to print out a form or call City Hall 
uh, to get the, the application, fill out the application, mail it to City Hall, and then when you get the, the ballot back, then mail that in. I want to stress, too, I don't know the truth of this, but I keep hearing that it's important to have two stamps on that envelope to make sure that it gets through, and important enough to mail early to make sure that there's enough time because the ballots have to be in by 5 p.m., I believe. I'm looking on for... On election day, yes. On election day. So you had to you have to account for that and account for um, the mailing time as well. So you can do that. You, you can do it by mail. You can call. You can walk in and do it. Uh, there are just no reasons to not do it. The one application that you will fill out will actually cover you for both elections. It will entitle you to have a ballot mailed to you for both the primary and the general election. You can mail those in from the convenience of your home. Uh, then you can pull up a, a, a chair or, a, or a, s a corner of a sofa, watch this TV station, Channel 23, to see the election returns coming in at night and to be able to be part of that kind of a democracy. Have I missed anything? I don't think so. I do. But if you sure. can't get an absentee ballot, I, they've made every effort to make sure that the polls are safe places to be. Um, the people working there will be wearing masks, um, they'll be socially distanced, they'll be wiping things down. So if by chance you find it impossible or you don't believe in, trust the absentee ballot, which are perfectly safe, the polls are a safe place to be. That's, that's important. Um, for years that I, when I've been politically active, well actually all the time, I, I, I love the pageantry of going to yeah. the polls. I love taking my pen, my marker, and, and making my mark. Um, when I run, um, I love to be outside with my sign. I love to network with people and talk to people and remind them uh, of things that they've asked me about or, or listen to the concerns that they have and just be one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, when, I, when I'm not running, I will actually work in the polls, and I know some of the great people that work in there. I know that they are great. I know that they are mortal, and um, I think protecting them to the best of our ability is important. I do agree that the polls will be safe and be safe for those workers as well, but I want to make sure, I want to ensure. And the election will. won't be delayed. Exactly. No. <laughs> I think that's the, that's the important thing. And it will not. So for me, it will, it's a bitter disappointment to tell you that I am filling out my absentee ballot today when I go home. I want to be at the polls. I want to meet you at the polls. I want to hold my sign. I want to be a on a day that's not bitter or cold like some of the November days. But nonetheless, I, I so want to be there, but I think that given the circumstances of our world, it's important for me, one, to do what is important, and two, to model for my constituents and for those people that I care about and that I love that it is an appropriate thing to do at this time. Hopefully next year when the city elections come around, we'll be out there and running around with our signs and running around with uh, everything. And by the way, I may be a block away all alone with a mask and a sign perhaps, <laughs> um, but not actually going to the polls. At this time, I'd like to close out the show. I certainly want to thank our two candidates. Um, one is, of course, Senator uh, Kevin Kavanaugh, also Alderman Kevin Kavanaugh, but his election now is the state election for Senator. Um, from Ward 12, Bill Zakharoff, who will be stepping up into the Manchester arena to take the place, hopefully, of Bob Backus and to represent Ward 12. Also, not in the studio, we've tried to maintain social distancing and to do things appropriately here. Uh, Heidi Hamer, Representative Heidi Hamer, has done a great deal behind the scenes. We are now calling her our production assistant, yeah. I believe. Uh, John Hopwood, who is also on the ballot uh, for... County Commissioner. County Commissioner, thank you. Uh, he has graciously given us this TV time and, and been supportive in so many ways. Behind the, there's a, a glass wall back there, a uh, young man named Brendan who's always very sweet to me and, and uh, coaches me through my ear when you, you don't know what's going on. Uh, and, and most importantly, uh, all of us, I think, are, are going to have to take a look f going forward for <laughs> for the future. I just saw the signal that I have to wrap up. <laughs> I really want to thank um, Patty Cornell, my my colleague, my friend, uh, a champion of great things in education. Um, thank you very much, Manchester, and thank you for joining us for today's show.